little fifth graders, it is time to practice division of whole numbers. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to do the first one for you. And then the next one, make sure you have a sheet of paper out and ready to rock and roll. This one is 511 divided by 7. Mm -hmm. That rhyme. So here we have it. 511 is the dividend. It goes inside the division frame. 7 is the divisor. It goes outside the division frame. So my steps are to divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, repeat if necessary. So the first thing I need to ask myself is, can 7 go into 5? And the answer is no. Now you can put a 0 on top of here if you want to, or you can just skip to the next place. Can 7 divide into 51? And the answer is yes, of course it can. Now this is where you need to know your multiplication fact. What times 7 is close to 51 without going over? And the answer is 6. Now I divide it into, I'm sorry, the answer is 7. Now I divide it into 51. So my 7 will come up above the 1 in 51. 7 times 7 is 49. So then I just multiply. Now my next step is to subtract. So, let's review. I divided 7 into 51. It goes in 7 times. 7 times 7, my next step is to multiply. It's 49. Now, my next step is to subtract. 51 minus 49. So, 1 minus 9, I can't do it. Borrow, make that a 4, and then it's 11 minus 9 equals 2. 4 minus 4 is 0. Now, I don't have to put that 0 down. My next step is to... Teacher, please find this interruption, but if we have any faculty member or student that missed their first picture day and need to have picture made, please report to the gym at this time. Any students or any faculty and staff members that missed their normal picture day and want to have picture made, please report to the gym at this time. Thank you. Sorry about that interruption. My next step is to bring down any numbers that have not been used. So here's my one. I'm bringing it down. Now I got to repeat. Division. 7 will go into 21 how many times? Without going over. And the answer is 3. 3 times 7 is 21 because my next step is to multiply. My next step is to subtract. 21 minus 21 is 0. And then my last step is to bring down, but I have nothing to bring down. So that means I'm finished. My quotient, or my answer, is 73. All right. Pause the video. I'm going to leave this one up here for, for some help. Pause the video and do 618 divided by 3. Pause the video. All right, let's try it out. Let's see how well you did. Hopefully you did well. Remember, the dividend goes inside the division bar. The divisor goes outside the division bar. My first step is to divide. Can three go into six? Yes, it can. How many times? Two times. So I divided into six. So my 2 is going to go above the 6. 2 times 3 is 6. That's multiply. My next step is to subtract. 6 minus 6 is 0. My next step is to bring down. Now I can only bring down one number at a time. So I bring down the 1. Now I divide. 3 going to 1 how many times? 0 times. 0 times 3 is 0. 
Let's multiply. My next step is to subtract. 1 minus 0 is 1. I have to subtract. We bring down. I have a number to bring down. I bring down the 8. Remember, we only bring down one number at a time. Now we've got to do it all over again. 3 will go into 18. 6 times. 6 times 3 is 18. That's a multiply step. Now my subtract. 18 minus 18 is 0. Nothing left to bring down. 0 is a remainder. I don't have to put remainder 0. My answer is 206. All right, pause the video, and then do this one. 285 divided by 3 again, so it should be easy. I'm going to leave this one up here to guide you if you need some help. Pause the video. All right, let's see how bad you did. I mean good. Okay. Dividing again. Can 3 go into 2? No, it can't. So I'll go to the next digit. Can 3 go into 28? Yes, it can. How many times without going over? The answer is 9 times. So I put my 9 over the 8 because I divided into 28. 9 times 3 is 27. That was multiply. My next step is to subtract. 8 minus 7 is 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. I'm not going to put that 0 down. Now my last step is to bring down an unused number. The 5 has not been used, so I'll bring it down. Starting over. Divide. 3 going to 15. How many times? You should have 5 times down. 5 times 3 is 15. Now I'll, that was multiplied, now I'll subtract. 15 minus 15 is 0. No more numbers to bring down. I got 0. My answer is 95. Let's try one more. I'm trying to trick you here. This looks like an easy problem. And I'm trying to fool you. In fact, let me just get rid of that. You don't need no more help. 16 divided by 5. Pause the video and do that. All right, let's see how bad you did. I mean, good. 16 divided by 5. 16 is my dividend. 5 is my divisor. Can 5 divide into 1? No. Can 5 divide into 16? Yes. How many times without going over? You should have 3 times. Now the 3 is going to go above the 6 because it's dividing into 16. 3 times 5 is 15. That was multiply. Now we subtract. 16 minus 15 is 1. My last step is to bring down. Now listen, I don't have anything to bring down. That means I am finished. But I don't have a zero here. I have a one here. This is the remainder. So my answer is three. Remainder one. This is my remainder. Always put an R and a one. Three remainder one. So if you've done all your steps correctly and you still have something left over when you're done with all your steps, that is a remainder. Don't ever forget that. You'll type an R and a 1 next to your quotient, or, your, or whatever that number is, in all your division problems. There you have it, little fifth graders. That's how you divide whole numbers with a divisor of one digit. Now, we're going to practice this a couple days, and then we're going to end up doing problems like this. Uh, 378, and let's say we have 17. We'll have two-digit divisors instead of just one digit like we're practicing today. But we're going to practice this a little bit to get used to our steps. And then we're going to move on. Now listen, if you ever forget your multiplication fact, or let's say you didn't do what you were supposed to do in third grade or in fourth grade, and you still don't know your 
Multiplication facts because you haven't been doing reflex math like I've been telling you to. You can always put whatever, let's say 5 for example. Whatever your divisor is, you can always put the multiplication facts on the side of your paper. You can just work them out. 5 times 0 is 5. 5 times 1, oops, that should be 0, I'm sorry. 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 3 is 15. And you can go all the way down to 9. And you can have that on your paper to help you if you don't know your multiplication facts like you're supposed to. There's no excuse to not getting these right. You know how to work your facts if you don't have them memorized. Now, go to Google Classroom and do your practice and make a 100.